Lots of games give you more difficulty options after you beat the game, but only a select few really significantly change up the game. So here are 10 great games that change with unlockable difficulty modes. Starting off with number 10, let's get one of the obvious ones out of the way, God of War Ragnarok and New Game Plus. Uh, this one really went above and beyond with its New Game Plus mode. Uh, added to the game with the 4.0 update, it didn't actually have New Game Plus back when it came out. We were actually pretty bummed. But it turns out this mode has so many altered or added features to it that it's almost impossible to list everything here unless you want to sit around here all day. Uh, it has all the usual stuff you'd expect from New Game Plus, you know, all your weapons, armor, and skills and equipment are usable right from the start, but with all of that, you also get access to new armor sets that are exclusive to New Game Plus, as well as new enchantments, a new type of currency, and there's even a new shield you can get. And as you probably know, each shield is pretty different, so that's significant. Enemies are, of course, a lot tougher. <laughs> You all right, brother? Especially if you're playing on Give Me No Mercy and Give Me God of War difficulties. Because now, enemies will randomly turn elite and get a lot stronger, and certain bosses have runic armor that then makes them resistant to special moves. Now again, that's only a short list of the changes with the new game plus mode in God of War Ragnarok. It's a really big expansion to the game that gives people so much more to do if they want to come back for a second round. So consider it if you haven't. Now, next over at number nine, the new Dead Space remake also contains a pretty robust new game plus. It doesn't have as much going on as God of War. You know, at least it doesn't have as much stuff as that one adds, but there's some significant changes made to the game if you go back for a second round. It's not just the same old thing. You know, you get a bunch of new text logs that lead to a secret ending and the highest level rig in the entire game, which you're gonna need because there's something new lurking on the Ishimura. Now, there are new phantom variant necromorphs who are faster, tougher, and even creepier looking than your standard variety. And they throw them at you uh, mixed in with other enemies like you'd expect, but the devs also place them in unexpected places like hiding around corners or in resource rooms where you'd normally just expect to be totally safe. Uh, these guys are so dangerous and unpredictable that they completely change the experience of the game. So while they might not sound like they're all that different, they are just alternate versions of standard enemies, they actually significantly change how you might play the game. Now it's not just about checking vents and watching your back, but everywhere you go now is a potential huge ambush. They somehow found a way to make the game even more tense than before, and we gotta commend them for that. Next over at number eight, let's talk about Batman Arkham Knight and another new game plus. Now it's worth pointing out that the original Batman Arkham Asylum was one of the first modern games to like kind of change the experience really significantly when you go into new game plus, and every game in the series that followed continued with that tradition. Uh, the one constant in every Arkham game is that if you play the game again, it's going to be tougher. Obviously, enemies are all around more aggressive, they take longer to beat, and they do more damage. And on top of all that, the enemy layouts have been remixed, so tougher enemies start showing up way earlier than they normally would. Uh, and to make combat a real test of skill, the counter icons are removed, so you really have to keep a close eye on enemies to know when to do a counter, because the game isn't flashing a big neon sign that says, hey, counter now at you anymore. Now you really have to adapt and really hone your skill and learn the attack animations. Asylum, City, and Origins all do this as well as Arkham Knight, but the reason Knight is on this list above everything else is that it doesn't stop there, it adds even more changes. Now, when you get caught by enemies, you lose a fear takedown charge, so being stealthy is even more important. Riddler, tell me what you know. All right, I'll talk. Just don't hurt me. Good. The overall difficulty is also locked at Nightmare, so combat is especially tough. And on top of all that, they throw one last jump scare at you. The very first scene where the Joker's corpse gets cremated, his eyes open now, and yeah. Uh, I'm not afraid to admit that that definitely got us all here. We were not expecting that. Next over at number seven, the only difficulty levels you have to access at first in the original Bayonetta was easy, very easy, and normal, uh, but the only way to play the first game on hard was to beat it. And on hard, you're basically looking at a new game. 
Yeah, Bayonetta mixed up enemy layouts, but here the difference is staggering. Like tough enemies like Grace and Glory and one of the most annoying enemies in the game, Fairness, show up during the tutorial on hard. Chapter 1, you get ambushed by a Joy who fights like a Bayonetta clone and is normally considered a boss, and they just show up randomly like it's no big deal. I mean, hard is bad enough, but if you beat the game again, then you unlock the somewhat awkwardly named uh, Climax Mode, which plays very similar to hard mode, but with one big twist. Which time, you know, that essential ability that slows down time after a perfect dodge, it's disabled, it's turned off. This game is lightning fast, so unless you're using exploits, trying to play it without being able to slow down time can be brutally difficult, so good luck with that. Now next over at number 6, let's talk about one of my favorite game series, Max Payne. Now, not every difficulty mode you unlock has to be brutally hard, I mean, at least not in the same way. New York Minute mode is a staple of the Pain series, where instead of being able to take your time and clear out levels, you know, like a normal game, you have to finish each level before this timer runs out. And Max Payne 3 goes really crazy with it by making it so doing different things adds time to the clock. The timing on these things is not generous, so if you waste any time, then you're going to lose. So memorizing the stage layout and where enemies appear is practically essential to get through this mode. And that's not even the end of it. If you manage to beat New York Minute, then you'll unlock the frankly ludicrous New York Minute Hardcore mode, where... If you run out of time or die, then you're just not going back to the start of the level, you're going back to the start of the entire game. This one's for hardcore players only, you know, just basically just adding a timer. Doesn't seem like much, but it fundamentally alters how you play the game. It's like you're now a speedrunner, so good luck. Now next over at number 5, the Devil May Cry series has a lot of difficulty modes, and a lot of them are unlockable in some way. Uh, we've talked about stuff like Hell or Hell Difficulty, which makes it so enemies can kill you in one hit, but probably the biggest change to the games comes from this specific mode. It's unlocked automatically in Devil May Cry 5 Special Edition, but at least in the original Devil May Cry 4, you had to beat the game to get it, and it, it does something that I don't think we've seen any other action game do, really. Instead of making enemies significantly tougher, it just throws a lot more of them at you. Now, normally in these games, you're fighting what? Two, three, four enemies at once? Maybe like four or five if the game is feeling really spicy? But in the legendary Dark Knight mode, the game will happily throw like 20 to 30 enemies at you at once, turning what was primarily a fairly open arena into a wall of enemies. It's basically a Dynasty Warriors game at this point. All you can do is hack and slash at the endless hordes and just kind of hope for the best. It makes the entire game feel so different, but in a fun way. It doesn't make it any easier though. I mean, enemy health and aggression are equivalent to Son of Sparta difficulty, which is the game's version of hard mode. So there's a lot of them and they're pretty aggressive. It's still fun to just go nuts at a giant group of enemies though. I mean, it's an experience. You just never get playing the game normally. Now next over at number 4, for a rhythm game, Hi-Fi Rush is actually pretty forgiving, at least on normal difficulty. It gives you a lot of margin for error, which I guess is a blessing in disguise for those of us who are uh, less rhythmically inclined. Of course, there are harder difficulty levels, but the toughest, the one called Rhythm Master, it only becomes available after you beat the main story. And on top of having extremely tight timing on the rhythm, uh, you know, you basically have to be getting perfects every time now, uh, there's also no margin for error. Enemies have way more health, and of course, they do so much more damage. So if that's all that's changed, then we wouldn't have too much to talk about. So here's the most important alteration. If your rhythm rank ever drops below a C, then you instantly lose. That means you gotta keep the beat going at all times, not just in combat, everywhere.
it completely changes how you approach this game because now it's not just about survival, it's about keeping the rhythm going no matter what. It's not fun, now it's like a brutal music teacher just beating you over the head and it's good for that. Next over at number three, uh, let's shift a little bit. Killer7. It's uh, safe to say it's a weird ass game, so it only makes sense that the difficulty levels are strange. Now, after beating the game, you unlock Killer8 mode, which locks the game at bloodbath difficulty and gives you an extra character to work with, a young Harmon Smith, the leader of the Smith Syndicate. And this guy is powerful. Instead of like a crappy little pistol, he comes packing a Tommy gun, which makes quick work of most of the enemies you fight in this game. And for the most part, this would make the game way easier, except for two things. On Bloodbath, a single hit from an enemy will kill everyone but Harmon instantly, and enemy weak spots are now invisible. That's the big one. Uh, the only way to kill a Heaven Smile is to shoot its weak spot, so making these invisible here, uh, it makes things a little bit tougher, you know? Just, just a little. Oh yeah, and enemies are also faster in this mode, so it's just pretty brutal all around. It's nice that they let you play as a cool guy, but the fact that they take away one of the core pinpoint things to take down the enemies, oof. And they're faster? Woof. <laughs> Now over at number two, all the recent Resident Evil games have had great unlockable difficulty modes that mix things up. I mean, you probably thought we were gonna talk about Resident Evil 4 Remake here. That's been getting a lot of love. We wanna change things up and give some props to Resident Evil 7 and the Madhouse difficulty. There's the usual changes that we've come to expect, like tougher enemies that show up in greater numbers and late game enemies showing up much earlier, but that's only the start, dude. Uh, now, instead of being able to save freely at any video recorders you find, uh, you have to now use cassette tapes to save, which work a little bit like ink ribbons in the old games. Uh, the cassettes come in limited supply, so you'll have to be a lot more cautious about saving. So if you die, you could potentially lose a lot of progress. You got a lot fewer resources in general in this mode too. I mean, instead, the game throws more separating agent at you, which breaks down items into crafting materials, forcing you actually to just sacrifice more items to make the stuff you want. All these changes fundamentally alter the experience of playing the game. It really does change things in a significant and interesting way. Pretty much every modern Resident Evil game has a mode similar to this one, but none of them change the way you play the game as much as this one does. And with the whole ink ribbon, really, or rather cassette tape thing, it kind of turns it back into an old school stressful Resident Evil game, and we love it for that. You won't be howdy. <laughs> yeah, piggy, piggy, piggy. Now down to number one, of course, it's Ninja Gaiden Black Hard and Beyond. Now, most unlockable hard modes make the enemies tougher or they show up more often or, you know, like we said before, but nothing really changes it up like Ninja Gaiden Black does. Unlocked after beating the game on normal, hard mode is practically an entirely new game. It doesn't just change the layouts, it actually includes multiple new enemies that are completely unique to hard mode. And right from the start, things are different, with like the white ninjas appearing instead of the much easier brown ninjas. It takes until chapter four to see things really change. Commandos get replaced with these mechanized commandos who hit harder and absorb way more damage than the standard ones, and new demons called the Bast Fiends start attacking you. These things never appear at all in normal mode. They only show up in hard and beyond. And that's just the start. More new enemies and extremely tough mini-boss doppelgangers start popping up all over the place. I'm 
not even talking about all the new traps or the altered item placements that you already got used to. Uh, there are so many changes that it would be impossible to list them all here, but there's a reason why Ninja Gaiden Black is a legendary game. Let's just say that. Those are some good difficulty modes, but also we got a bonus one for you. It's from Castlevania Portrait of Ruin, the old axe armor mode. This one is definitely different. If you're somehow crazy enough to waste time killing a thousand axe armors in normal mode, then beat the game, uh, then you'll unlock this exciting new challenge mode. Uh, you get to play as an old axe armor, uh, who's just as slow and as weak as a regular one. You can't use items, and you only get two sub weapons. Doesn't that sound like fun? Uh, the mode definitely changes how you play the game, just not necessarily for the better, but it's different. It gives you that. Playing this mode just for a few minutes kind of feels like torture. I can't imagine anyone actually beating the game as one of these guys, but people have done it, so more power to you. Again, those are some games that really change significantly with unlockable difficulty modes. Some cool ones we wanted to highlight today, but there are plenty more out there, so let us know some of your favorites down in the comments. Maybe if there's enough, we'll do a part two of this video. But if you just like talking games with us every day man clicking the like button helps us out we'd really appreciate that and if you're new consider subscribing maybe hitting that notification bell because we put out videos every single day but as always thanks for watching we'll see you guys next time